Hello everyone. It's been a little while since I've done a Pray Like Daniel. Um, I have been praying though and uh, we have been witnessing on our street. We've done three street services now um, which have been uh, yeah great great to be able to um, tell people about God. Um, I found out where many people in the street are in terms of their faith but um, uh, yeah I guess I'm, I'm sort of in the situation of being slightly like well come on God we've told them three times the gospel surely they, they've got it by now but um, it's just been patient waiting for the for God's timing in people's lives and keep walking with him and I think as we've been witnessing um, I've just been I guess reminded again that uh, the task before us to go and make disciples is something we cannot do by our own strength and walking with the spirit and not in the flesh is so key to living a fruitful life for the Lord and um, so uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2 says but thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphal procession in Christ and through us spreads the fragrance of, of the knowledge of him. So it spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. For we are God to the for we are to God the aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one we are the smell of death, to the other the fragrance of life. And who is equal to such? A task and that sense of gosh who is equal to such a task I've really been feeling it the last uh, last couple of days just who is equal to such a task it's a miracle uh, when anybody becomes a Christian and ours is to fa faithfully follow be led by the Holy Spirit and and obey obey him walk with him and as I was walking this morning um, out in the woodland near us there are certain patches of woodland that were so beautiful and the reason they were beautiful was because the light was shining through uh, through the canopy or through the between um, the plants and and catching the plants. The light reflected off the leaves was stunningly beautiful, and I was thinking how the the leaf itself hasn't changed, the tree hasn't changed, the the plant hasn't changed, but the light is shining upon it which makes it just stunning and um, then I look across the field and there's half in shadow which is is pleasant and there's half in bright sunlight which is glorious and I was thinking for us we need to be in that place of reflecting God's light God's glory for to have his light shining upon us that makes us beautiful as his church we physically and mentally we may think the same things we may do the same things we may be the same people but when we are bathed in his light and his love and his spirit and when we are walking with him in that in his spirit when his light of his face is shining upon us when we're positioning ourselves in such a manner that we're seeking his glory we're seeking him we're, we're looking at him that's when the church starts to shine that Isaiah 60 arise and shine for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you when we as a church are positioning ourselves to receive the glory of the Lord to see it to to reflect it back a bit like the moon reflects the Sun and when there is no shadow the moon is most glorious um, which made me think later on in this 2 Corinthians passage um, it made me think of that image of viewing his face with an unveiled face so um, in chapter 3 he starts to compare Moses' covenant and saying there was glory in that, there was beauty in that, with the new covenant. So if there was beauty in what in what um, could only show people their sin, and you had to keep sacrificing animals in order to get right with God, and it was this, um, it was an unfinished covenant in 
it was it led to, it was pointing to Jesus it wasn't in and of itself uh, everything we needed but and yet there was glory and beauty in that if there was glory and beauty in that then how much more is there glory and beauty in the Holy Spirit when he comes into our lives in the covenant with Jesus blood um, so he says uh, now if the ministry that brought death which was engraved in letters on stone came with glory so that the Israelites could not steadily could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of its glory fading though it was will not the ministry of the spirit be even more glorious when Moses came down off the mountain having received the Ten Commandments his face glowed with the glory of God I want our faces to glow with the glory of God um, metaphorically speaking in terms of when out when we we're out and about when we're doing the same things as we've always done the plants were the same as they've always been it's just that the light of God was on them We've been doing the same things we've always done, but in the power of God, with his glory upon us, with his love upon us. Um, if the ministry that condemns men is glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? For what was glorious has no glory now in comparison with the surpassing glory. And if what was fading away came with glory, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts? Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold we are very bold we are not like Moses who would put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away but their minds were dull were made dull for to this day the same veil remains when the old covenant is read it has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. You can see. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the glory, the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. When Moses came down the mountain he veiled the glory of what the Lord was doing to the other Israelites because they couldn't cope with it. Their hearts were hardened, they didn't want they they were afraid. And I think part of what we've been doing in going out onto our street and worshiping God and, and, and reading scriptures and testifying is lifting the veil, not, not going veiled as pretending not to be in love with Jesus, but actually just being honest, lifting the veil and saying, yeah, we've, we've been gazing at his glory and his glory is, and we want to reflect that that to you and I'm praying that the Lord will unveil their hearts that will lift the veil on them uh, on the people that that don't yet know him but are seeing what we are doing are witnessing with Moses coming down the mountain with a bright face witnessing is Jesus's church with unveiled faces reflecting the glory of God back to other people Therefore, chapter 4 says, therefore, since though, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, through God's mercy we have this ministry, it is grace that we get to do this, it is mercy that we get to do this, we do not lose heart. So it wasn't something that I earned, I don't have to keep myself like perfect in order to do this, it's his grace and I'm living in his grace and I'm going to walk in his grace. We do not lose heart, rather we have renounced secret and shameful ways we do not use deception nor do we distort the word of god on the contrary by setting forth the truth plainly we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of god and even if our gospel is veiled it is veiled to those who are perishing the god of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. To behold his face, that is the 
the wonder of being a Christian, to behold the face of Christ, behold the love, behold the joy, behold the glory, behold the power, behold the risen King. As we behold him, we will reflect that light back to other people. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. So that jars of clay, it goes back to that other question that he asked in chapter 2, which was, it was, and who is equal to such a task? Who is equal to such a task? We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are fading, wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. I'd love to just keep reading, to be honest, 2 Corinthians. Oh, wow. It's just amazing, encouraging passage. Then goes on to talk about our resurrection bodies and a heavenly dwelling. And oh, it's just beautiful. But I'm, I'm, I won't read you the whole, the whole book. Go and read it for yourself. Go and read 2 Corinthians. Um, but this treasure in jars of clay, we have this treasure in jars of clay. Let our eyes be on the king. Let us behold his face. Let's be transformed into his likeness as we behold him. And let's reflect that to the world. Honestly, just honestly, it um, there was chapter 4, verse 2. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, be setting, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience and the sight of God don't have to fake the gospel like you don't have to change it to make it palatable just be honest just be honest honest about your love for jesus honest about what he's done in your life honest about what the scriptures mean just be honest if god is unveiling their face they'll receive it if the god of this world meaning uh, the god of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers small g god um meaning the enemy the devil if he has blinded their eyes they won't receive it. But that that will be the same whether or not you Well basically don't don't change the gospel. Just be honest. Be bold. Be bold, be honest. And I pray for us all that we with unveiled faces will behold the king. Amen.